All right, we're live. We are live. We're a couple we of live together? wire live people. <laughs> what are we building together today? I'm like all in for it. What are we doing? Well, yeah, you know, this is a great one. Well, the, the, the theme of the day for today is, is what is my purpose? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, for us to be kind of inquiring into what our purpose is and sharing it and everything else like that, I'm excited. So, yeah, last week I had to reflect quite a bit because uh -huh. we, we touched the surface and kind of started to dig in intentionality, weaving in the, the four levels of learning, really talking about the different, you know, stages from a tribal leadership perspective, uh, the uh -huh. Spartan mindset. So, like, everything's kind of gelling and coming together, which... Right for me is, is perfect, but it also warrants the power of pause and reflection more than just taking in what we talk about and then moving on. Right. You so, know, Sammy, Sammy, have you ever cooked, uh, like wheelie base? No. Or a big, uh, like a big stew. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. So, well, that's what wheelie base is. It's a big stew. Okay. So when you cook it, you put the, you, you know, you put the ingredients in and you try and time them going in and you yep. got the pot simmering and stuff like that. And then there's a time when you just let it simmer so that it can all come together and all of the, all of the flavors can go together. And I hear what you're saying with a Spartan way and with tribal leadership and with the conversation on intentionality and the four uh, pillars of learning and, you know, all of that sort of stuff that, Part of this is we got to stir the pot, and we got to let it simmer, and we got it all kind of come together and get the flavors all married up. Yeah, and, and the pillars that are really coming to the surface, and when I have conversations with many different you know types of people, different backgrounds, the mental strength component is really boiling up, and going pro in life is really boiling up. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, well, I mean, just, yeah. Going pro in life is always going to be there. It's going to be on the back end of every conversation, so like that. <clears throat> but I will tell you that the between the years mental conversation is going to be there from beginning through to long after we are dead. Yeah, because that's no really where it happens is right. It happens between the years. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've had a couple of people directly message me um, asking uh, questions. So I figured, hey, why not bring it to this and let's just chew on it and talk about it and and learn from each other here and build something special for others to take a seat at our table here and yeah. um you know promote that more and more as we kind of pulse this out are you good with that i not only am i good with it i really love it that what we're getting is we're beginning to get feedback where people have an interest and they want us to kind of address something underline something fluid you know open it up and so on like that uh, it just shows that the the partnership is beginning to develop, and and and, uh, and I'm for that. Yeah, and and as ever, what I love what we're doing is we're not focused on how many people view as much as the quality of feedback back to yep. put together. Yep. So yep. it can't get much better than that. And I'm I'm just so excited because it's building off of the concept of intentionality, like we hit on last last week. But, you know, even more to go to go one more level through is, OK, I bring my best authentic self, Sam, like someone tells me, I bring my best authentic self. I'm positive. I, I believe that I'm all in. Maybe there's areas that I probably could challenge myself on it. But how do how do you have the power of pivot in mind when you are growing, you're evolving, you want to be intentional in every room you're in? but you need to make a drastic change and pivot because you've evolved beyond your current capacity or role. Yeah, wow. That is, uh, first of all, I wanna go back and just say something and underline something you said just a moment ago about uh, really that the conversation is qualitative rather than uh, what we're interested in is the total numbers. Uh, big, it's a big exception in our world in the world of Zoom and so on like that, because it seems to be all about the numbers. But I say that it's a rare deal that what you've got is a couple of people that are really committed to the quality of the conversation and will let the quantity happen all by itself. So that being said, now the question of the power of pivot and when you get to a place where, you, where it really becomes necessary. First of all, uh, 
you know, you're always and always and always and always looking at, you know, what am I committed to here? You know, what is the purpose of what we're doing? So today's deal, what is the purpose of what it is that we're doing here? And, and then second of all, I think you really want to take a look at where is the pain point? So, you know, you get headed a certain way and you're going a long way. And then after, you know, in a while, uh, you may find that a situation has changed. You've learned a lot. You've developed, you've grown and you, you know, you, you're, you're headed one way, but if you don't do something about it, you're going to end up there rather than where you want to go. And you're going to have to make the, you're going to have to make the, 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 the turn and uh, you're going to have to get yourself on route. So it is important that every day you're reconstituting yourself in a way that you are very clear what you're up to for the day. And then you want to watch for the pain points. And, uh, I, and I'm sure you can speak to this too. You know, uh, when you're putting together team things like you have done and I have done in the past. And uh, we all started out and everything was good and it was all rainbows and unicorns and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you get down the road and it's like, nah, we're not headed where we want to go. We're going to have to pivot. We're going to have to turn. Uh, we're going to have to shift the direction. Sooner is better. Yeah. Sooner and, is better. You know, I think for me, it's if you're truly an all in, lean in, fail forward fast person, yep. you don't wait till it gets out of hand or spiral, right? Pivot. <laughs> exactly. Pivot. It's never going to get any better. Yeah. So pivot, if you think about the definition of pivot, it's a central point, a pin, a shaft in which a mechanism oscillates. Okay. So you may be in your current capacity role, whatever it, it may be in life that, that you're at, but you uh -huh. have made a decision, you've made a conscious decision that I should be doing something else. Number one, you shouldn't overnight have this right? Th this stuff happens. It's not like day and night, right? You, you have some, no, not at all. Not at all. You may have ignored it. And now it's come to a point where you can't ignore it. Right. But I believe in parallel pathing, right? We talked about this last, last week a little bit. So you're in a role, you need to be your most authentic, you have to give it 150% even if you want to change a circumstance because you're only as good as, you know, the work product and relationships you build every day. So you don't want to shortchange that while thinking the next step because sometimes the grass is not greener on the other side, right? But for me, it's important to not put yourself in such a negative space where you have no peripherals for beta testing, let's call it, like do minor little tests on those other areas that you believe you want to pivot to okay. in a more controlled kind of manner, right? Because you'll have the safety blanket of your current role, but you're kind of dipping your toe in that water. Now, I believe in diving in all the time, but for someone who isn't used to that, right? It, it's a hard thing to just do overnight. So the in-between of that is parallel pathing. And then seeing, is it really what you thought? Or do you have some idea of something that it really isn't? And you really should be here, but evolving your performance development. I think that's a really, uh, I think that's a really smart and actually an easy way to kind of uh, uh, sort of start to get at the solution. Mm -hmm. And what I would add to that is that this is a time where if you don't have mentors and coaches around you, you're in trouble. You're right. You, uh, so first of all, I want to go back to what you said a little bit earlier when you said it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't day and night. Mm -hmm. Actually, it starts showing up in, in smaller ways and then slightly larger ways and larger ways until it gets loud and ugly. Yes. And if you've got it to, if you've let it go to the point where hoping against hope that it was going to get better mm -hmm. and it gets loud and ugly, you are in deep trouble and you're not managing intelligently. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Second thing is from day one or somewhere before day one, you want to start putting people that you can actually depend on. They don't have to be experts in your field. Mm -hmm. They have to be experts in being intelligent and wise 
in taking a look at things. It would be helpful if they had some kind of idea, you know, had a clue about business, that would be good. But on the other hand, they need to be real. Sometimes it's your mother, you know, it definitely is people that you need to be listening to and people who will tell you the truth when you are uh, off in the weeds. And this is what happens as you get off in the weeds trying to fix rather than doing the parallel thing. So uh, I'm all for exactly what you said. And I'm saying, and uh, get people around you who really are supportive. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I do um, or I would recommend for others to do, maybe some modified version of it, uh -huh. is take a, a holiday of anywhere from three to, to seven days. I think 10 is too long. And instead of going on that vacation, do what you want to pivot to and figure out when are your most creative ah. blocks and if you can sacrifice a vacation to do that, figure out where you are your best self within your day, right? Then maybe you're ready to go. Don't wait. Yeah, well, Don't wait. Don't do tomorrow what you can do today. Now, if you do it and it's dreadful, all you're thinking about is vacation and why, you know, I, this is such a stupid idea. I don't know why I would ever want to do it. Well, I think uh, you should have a nice heart to heart look at yourself in the mirror, right? And, and, and challenge, are you coming to the table with an authentic rationale? And I don't even really like the word rationale, but we'll go with it of I want to pivot because it is going to help me grow and live my life like a work of art or not. And if you're just doing it because other people are doing it, it's the popular thing, they're making all this money. If you don't have impact before income, I guarantee you, you will lose and you will, you will burn out. The, 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 the flame will go down and you're going to be right where you were and then you're going to want to pivot again. Yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, that's brilliant. That's, you know, the idea of taking what would be uh, like a three-day vacation. I'm kind of for the three-day but uh, for the three day vacation and, and, and start the parallel thing. Yeah. Second thing I want to say is I'm with you behind the word rationale, which people use as a word reasonable. There's nothing that is actually of any value said Bernard Shaw uh, that uh, was ever accomplished by the reasonable man. It's always some sort of unreasonable dedication to it. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. One of the things that all people, and I mean every single human being, have in, in common is they've got reasons. So, you know, if you ask me about anything, I could give you a reason for or against. And if you don't accept that, I can give you another and I can give you another. The human mind yeah, never stops at being able to kind of flush up reasons. But here's the deal. What you want to get at is the cause. You actually want to get at the source of it. Why are we doing what we are doing? What mm -hmm. Simon Sinek says. Why are you doing what you're doing? You need to answer the what, the how, and the why in particular mm -hmm. of what you're doing. You need to revisit that. And you need to get at the cause of how come you're doing what you're doing. Because the reasons are cheap. The cause is sacred and precious. And once you are grounded again in your cause, because you were at one point mm -hmm. and you've gotten lost, you've gotten taken away, you've gotten seduced by something. Maybe if we were seduced by some sort of conversation of how brilliant you are until all of a sudden the world started telling you you're not so brilliant. But you want to get back to the cause of how come you're doing what it is that you're doing. And in that cause, Ground yourself and source yourself in that. So I'm with you. Not so much the rationale, but the three a, a three day vacation, five day vacation, to actually do the deal, and at the same time be dwelling in what is the cause for what it is that we're doing this, and get straight with yourself. Having having surrounded yourself with good coaching and training mm -hmm. and ability, can't go wrong. Yeah. So root cause analysis is big for me. 
It always has been uh -huh. because I want to go below the surface as to what is the catalyst and driver. And right. that's also the science in me, right? When yep. I've developed yep. experiments and I've learned that, you know, you have a hypothesis, like you have a thesis, right? Mm -hmm. I want to do this, or I believe this is the outcome that will happen when I do this, right? Everyone's entitled to that. Everyone has a thesis of their life. Everyone has a thesis of something important to them or some outcome that they think they are going to derive by multitude of, of different variables, as long as they have a couple of controls. Fine. I, I'm, bought, I'm bought into that. But in order to really get to the data driving it and, and be based in fact, right, you need to root cause. You need to truly assess unbiasedly the landscape. And for me, what I have found a lot is in the root cause of my life, there were areas where I tolerated problems. So you tolerated, say that again, problems, problems. Okay. So a red flag is a red flag is a red yep. flag, right? And that doesn't just mean in my professional capacity. This is my personal capacity that also influences how I navigate the world, okay, into yes. my professional career as well. So that goes into relationships, right? Yes. Whether there be friendships, um, romantic relationships, uh, your, your friends and family, your acquaintances, those that are in your inner circle. And, you know, what I have found is a lot of times I've just tolerated problems, and for me, if I truly am a fall forward fast, then there is no room for tolerating problems. It's a quick assessment, root cause, move on, right? And learn, obviously learn from it, you know, implement solution and, and, and move on, right? But yeah, for me, the root cause has been a game changer for me because it puts a mirror in front of my face that quite honestly, I created multitude of scapegoats and excuse space mentality for a short period of time that there's just no place for in my life. Boy, you know, <clears throat> what you're speaking is so much the truth. So, you know, that's kind of preach on. The, the deal about it is <clears throat> that the overall principle mm -hmm. is play the game, learn the rules, correct. Play the game, learn the rules, correct. And as you move to the next part of the game, it's play the game, but you're playing at a higher level at a different level and then learn the rules of that yeah. and then correct. Yeah. And I will say that when you get to a place where uh, it it's time to pivot, you haven't been paying attention to the game. You've been enjoying looking good. You've been enjoying being right. You've been enjoying people telling you how, what a great person you are, something. Yeah. But you're not playing the game. Yeah. And what there is to do is to get back in and play the game because you're at a place where you're about to get swallowed up by the game. The game, by the way, here's a good mantra. Water is wet, rocks are hard, and the game doesn't care. <laughs> uh, that's a so, good one. You know, so play the game, learn the rules, correct until you can be, uh, you're at a point of mastery and where you can dictate the rules. But I, all of this so you're going to be dictating you're going to be failing you're going to be falling forward fast you're going to be uh correcting you're going to be doing all of that mainly while you're creating space for yourself and the people around you to actually be intelligent and it means you know you there's a difference between being persistent mm -hmm. and consistent and being a blockhead yeah so and, you need to know the difference and for the you know the wonderful individual that asked me the question, right? That we're uh -huh. kind of talking about, you know, here. The other thought that had just kind of came up to my mind, John, is CEOs and, and managers, different than leaders, right? We, we've kind of established that last week. But Definitely so, yeah, if, yeah. Go if I'm an totally all-in in the role of manager. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm all-in and I have a high-performing performance, work ethic, and, and whatnot, right? And say I'm at that stage where I want to pivot, but I still believe in doing 150% of where I'm at, but I still don't really know. And I'm like in this in-between phase. Mm -hmm. A manager 
will find any way to just keep you just a little bit happy, a little bit happy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And the reason they do that, right, is efficiency. They know you produce high quality performance, so they don't want to lose you. So now you have become a candidate to stay in place and you become the person that gives Lamborghini effort off of a Ford salary. You're not incentivizing management to promote you because you're enabling an environment on how they can treat you. Yes. That's huge. And that's where people make a major, major, major mistake. Oh, I'm learning. Yes. I'm, I'm building all these capability sets. Look, I'm all for that for a period of time. But as you acquire skill sets and as the game slows down because it becomes easier and you're able to do something instead of an hour, you can do it in five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I believe in being paid for time. Why? Time is your most precious asset, period. You can't buy that. Right. You have to be intentional. You have to lead with integrity every instance you get. So right. if you're going to provide an opportunity for you to truly pivot, right? Just know that the more you kind of run in place like a hamster wheel, <laughs> because you're not ready, it's not the right time. I don't want to let go of my safety net, or I haven't at least parallel path some idea of where I think I want to go. A manager is going to see that. And they're going to just try to make you a little bit happier. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, super. Yeah. Really point well taken and, and uh, really well stated. Uh, I also want to say something about integrity because you mentioned it kind of in passing there. You know, for the most part, when you ask people what integrity means to them, it means some version of you do what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So a person who has integrity is a person who keeps their word, who does what they say they're going to do. If they don't do that, they clean it up and then they go do it again. That's not actually what the word integrity means. The word integrity actually is, uh, comes from a Latin meaning. Uh, you know, the, the Romans were bridge builders and, and, and road builders and so on like that. So the word means whole and complete and lacking nothing. That's the actual meaning of the word integrity, whole and complete and lacking nothing. If you were a Roman architect or a bridge builder, the way that you were, we tested the work with you is you built the bridge mm -hmm. and then they had you stand under the bridge while they marched the army, including the elephants across the bridge. Yep. So you know what the Romans did? they built with integrity. They built it and it was whole and complete and lacking nothing. Yeah. So your project, whatever your project is, and including the pivots that you make during the project, you wanna actually be looking at the cause of what you're doing and the integrity of what you're doing and make sure that you are whole and complete. You're not doing it because your mommy wants you to. You're not doing it because other people are making money of it. You're not doing it because of anything that is outside of you and outside of your cause. Yeah. And I know we're talking in terms of a, a frame of reference on career development, <clears throat> performance development, but this also goes, and, and you kind of said it, project. If you're on a project with a team, you don't yeah. want to tolerate problems. You want a root cause. You want to shorten that cycle from idea to commercialization. But right. in so often, especially in, in technology, you know, driven more manufacturing industries where I came from, well, well, molecule takes 10 years to make. So, you know, <laughs> it's just the way it is, or if something breaks, it's millions of dollars. You know, it's just what it is. It's, it's, it's your, our right to play in this game. And I, I challenge that, right? Because You've tolerated the fact that it's always been 10 years to create a multiple. Yes, there are going to be That's exceptions. That's exactly to it, right. But you have tolerated a problem which has now produced a behavior set, which is now impacting the fundamental culture of growth, period. And there is no repercussion as to the recourse of outcomes that come from you tolerating these problems. So now you're on a vicious cycle of, well, I'm in my, 
you know, investor day, right? Or I'm I'm out in the in the public talking about my earnings and I can't articulate growth or I'm trying to stretch a cookie. Well, you don't need to stretch a cookie just because you're in the manufacturing industry, right? It's you don't always have to be in the, the sexy industry like software, fast cycle technology. You don't need to do that. You can make what you're in sexy, right? Like you can make it a growth engine. You can be more than just a cash cap. Okay. It's what you tolerate from a top down, right? Which then funnels to an understanding and reservation from bottom up where now you're always doing this <laughs> and, and you're, and you're, and you're kind of stage fours are far few in between. You really yep. never get to stage five and you're living in the world of stage two and three. Yep. You know, if, uh, if you ever have a wonder, if you ever have a question and you should have a question about what your reputation is, mm -hmm. your reputation is invariably what you tolerate. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. You're right about that. You know, you did it to yourself. Yeah. And to be honest, and this is where some, some people call me a little bit cold um, because uh -huh. I'm so adapter die, right? I'm so, hey, you can control that controllable. What you bring to the table and your inability to tolerate a problem is your choice. But talk to me, talk to me about that. That's a, that's a, hmm, not my experience of you. So tell me what, how people would perceive you as cold. Oh, so you, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes we'll go in and I have the mentality of let's go quick, fail fast. Let's go. Right. Let's not, uh -huh. let's, let's, let's take the fluff out. And sometimes some people hide behind the fluff and they spent hours and hours on a presentation on a topic that they could have done in five minutes and I'm not going to tolerate it. So mm. I stop them and say, you're done. And I give people five minutes, move, five minutes, move. And, and you can't, if you, number one, can't articulate to a 10 year old, you've already over spoke most people's heads that I don't know. Yeah, like that's that, true. Right? Yeah. Second piece is, is if you can't tell me the what, how, and why in like five minutes over my head, it's not because I don't have the bandwidth to understand it's I value time. I value your time to not waste your time and I need the same back. And I'm trying to keep the boat moving. And if I'm trying to keep the boat moving while also keeping you on, I want to develop that muscle, that behavior set in you. And it's not going to feel good up, up front. And sometimes to those that just want to work a nine to five, they don't aspire to be at another level. They're just doing what they need to do to get by type of people. They'll never get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what cult, I wanted to get cult. clear. So, so in other words, uh, the, the, the lazy, the incompetent, the, uh, people that are just there and it's just a jig. Those are the ones who are saying that you're cold because, uh, you know, I would, I, I would bet more than a nickel that the people that, uh, that are motivated, that are to hand to, to, interact with what you're doing as more than just a job as maybe a calling or vocation or something that has a mission to yeah. it, yeah. something that has purpose to it. Something that, again, the question today is what is my purpose? So, you know, people who are dwelling in conversations like that, they're probably going to be thankful that they've got somebody with them who's going to go, we're not tolerating this. We're going to keep it moving like that. And, uh, and so it becomes a question of, you know, do you work around these people? Do you get rid of these people? How do, how do you work with it? Yeah, so this is interesting. There's two, two ways, probably, there's probably more, but two that I, you know, kind of think about. Uh -huh. Number one, if you don't want to be at the table and you just want to physically be there, but not be mentally there, then you won't uh -huh. be dressed in the room. You can take a seat in the room, but I'm not talking to you. I'm not right. bringing you in. I'm not going to champion on your behalf today, tomorrow, or in the future, period. You're making a, a conscious choice and I'm learning who you are to the core, right? And what I'll yep. do outside, I will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and not give up on people. I don't give up on people. I try to understand people. 
I want to know their why, right? A lot of times we talked about people give their what. So I need to understand if there's an underlying thing going on in their life that is seeping yeah. through. You don't right? know. You know, or, people are going through life life and death. Yeah. And or they just don't care, John. I mean, and, and yeah. in my experience. There's, there's where you draw the line. My experience is about 80% of the time, those people just don't care. Yeah. Right? Um, that's been my experience. I'm not saying it's any data that I collected. It's just been, you know, kind of my experience. Now, your little personal Pareto. Yeah. Now, the other way, which I found has been fun, is keep them on the team, keep going, keep kind of incorporating them like they're at the table, right? And say, trust the process. I know you don't see it. Listen, I get it. Not everybody's here. I'm all good with it. I'm all good with the fact that you can't show up yet because you don't see it, but trust the process. I want to show you this, even if you mm -hmm. don't have your actual mm -hmm. hands on it, but your name's mm -hmm. going to be on the project. You're going to get credit mm -hmm. for this project and you're going to see how we do it. Because if you can see how we do it and we can roll our sleeves up, okay, then in the future, Number one, you're going to have the courage to at least try it because you've seen how it is done. You see how you can pivot, right? You can energize others. You can negotiate every day with different people to get to where you want to go. But I don't put band-aids. I don't put lipstick on pigs because those will come off. And what I'm trying to do is build scalability, sustainability in everything that I touch, right? Yeah. This integrity, it is, it is critical for me. Okay. Yeah. So and, and that's, your that's kind of ability, your ability to actually distinguish between somebody who maybe they're going through a divorce and you don't know this, or their child is ill or something like that, that you keep them on the team or they don't get it for some reason because it just, it just didn't click with them. Distinguishing between that person who's on the one hand, that's somebody you want to actually build and develop. And the other person who just shows up for the victory lap. Yeah. But, but notice, notice how I didn't kick anyone off the team. I don't, yeah. I don't need to because the boat's going and those yeah. that don't want to be there will eventually fall off because their reality is going to catch well, up. Well, that's it. Yeah. Ultimately, ultimately, uh, as a function of your leadership, the culture will not tolerate it. Yeah. They'll fall off the boat and, and that's yeah. okay because for me, I wish more corporations right? And it's, it's, it's a tough one because how do you manage it, right? So instead of all at one time layoffs because the recession, things are pulling back. Oh, yeah. You know what, yeah. what I think would be really intelligent to do is every year, right? Assess your whole Pareto and your list, all right, of your, your talent pipeline, okay? And, you know, everyone's going to get ranked and you're never going to get away from that. It's just, that's the way their system and metrics are. Now everyone has different methodologies, but let's just go with the fact that you're going to have a Pareto, a bell distribution, which is a very legacy HR thing to think through. Right. And then you always want to kind of cut your tail off, right? You want to cut the tail that's not helping you. That might be bogging down your high performers or your middle of the pack that w could get to the high performance status, but they're having to manage the work that the, the tail isn't doing. Okay. So, Every year, I would challenge that the, the bottom, you know, anywhere from two to 5% automatically get let go. But what you do is you put them in this distinguished alumni group where you can help create resources to coach them and let them know why and give them resources to hone in our skill sets, let them decide if they want to use them or not. If they use them, they become part of your distinguished alumni that then you get a reference letter from someone who is willing to do a reference letter in the organization to your next job. You won't be mm -hmm. working at this corporation, but you've put in the effort to show me that you do want to learn and you care. It's just not a fit for our organization. That doesn't mean you're not a fit for every other organization. So I want to yeah. help. Right. And those that yeah, don't that's a do gracious it, way. That's a gracious way to do it because it is common that the, you know, that the, uh, least scoring, say five to 10% are let go, but to do it with grace, 
and to uh, and to do it uh, in a way that you show that you you value the resource that these people either are or they could be. That's very interesting. That's very yeah, interesting. I've not I've not heard that before. That's really good. Well, I've been noodling on this because instead of like these big layoffs, like let's let's think about how you do that, and then you you lay you lay the the, the opportunity set of op, you know of others to be able to come in. So now there's competition going, but it's healthy competition. So your high performers now, right? They need to repeat. Your middle of the pack need to elevate up. If not, they're going to be taken over and then they fall to the bottom, right? Yeah. And you know, a number of years ago, 25, 30 years ago, uh, Intel, uh, Intel does that. The bottom 10% are gone in every department every year. Yeah. And uh, uh, the book that came out of it was called Only the Paranoid Survive. I like that title. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it 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 puts you on it puts you on point. Okay. Not a great place to work, by the way, in terms of a culture. It's okay. it's really kind of, you know, a, a little on the brutal side. But uh, interesting point of view. Yeah, and for those that you know, just they get cut and they don't care. They're on to the next thing. Don't waste your time and resources. Yeah, on it. yeah, okay. yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I, I hope we uh, we hit that one because there's a lot of different legs to the power of pivoting and, and being okay with embarking and giving yourself room to learn if that's really what you want to do, if, if you're really making a decision. You know, it's all there. about searching for options. Uh, I would say I would say that a, 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 as a kind of a object lesson, Mm -hmm. uh, watch any game that Luka Doncic is playing in and you will see him pivot, 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 search for the options and everything, and then pick the option that works. Yeah. And I'll, that's I'll what go, you're doing. I'll go that's one what further. You're doing. Not only do you want to pivot like that, but you also want to cross train. So if you're a football player, you need to learn basketball. If you're a no softball question. player, you need to learn golf, right? How do you know? Right. So there's a, a component as you navigate and want to pivot. What skill sets do you have, or what skill sets um, skill sets you don't have to bridge the gap? And then where do you need to do the cross training before you take the leap, or could you learn it on the go? Look, start before you're ready. I will always say that. I will always support anyone who has the courage to do that because. Mm -hmm. It enables you to fall forward, fail fast, and go all in. And I'm living that right now. So I can speak from a place of being immersed in that. Uh -huh. but I'm going to tell you, we we get to be great every day. Like, it's simple, right? We get to make the choice every morning with how we intentionally start our day that's right. Whether it's with routine, what, what, whatever, whatever it is, right? But we, every day, we have a choice. And I can't stress that. I can give all the tool sets. I can give all the feedback, just like you can, John. But at the end of the day, the root, root cause of it all is you can be great every day. You make a choice not to, if that's the case. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. You know, Marlon Brando used to ask a really interesting question. What are you going to do? Yeah. you're gonna step up like no no one's gonna no one's gonna come for you like no one's gonna care as much as you think people care uh let's 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 call a spade a spade people may um have a sentiment for you right but at the end of the day if it's them versus you I'd probably bet the fact that people are going to be more selfish than not even if they're a servant leader Hey, oh, you think? Oh, you think? <laughs> for those that that want to debate me, I'm happy to take uh, direct message. In in, in, the, in the in the three major distinctions of aha, duh, and wow, that is a duh. Right, but what's crazy is um, not not a lot of people know that, John. Yeah, well, yeah, because they're living in a hopeful world. Yes, you know. This is not about hope. This is about what you're going to actually, you know, produce. So, you know, there's no room for a slack, right? 
the Spartan way, adapt or die. And, um, you know, don't do tomorrow what you can do today. And we can do a lot more than, than we think we can. And all you got to do is can. just try. Just yep. make the choice every day to be, yep. you know? Yep. So. Lots to talk about, lots more to talk about, but that's a good, I think, good conversation for today. Yeah. Well, thank you as ever. Oh, always my pleasure to be with a, a, someone who's alive. You know <laughs> <And> it. Well. <laughs> alive, not only alive, but, you know, jumping, growing, living all out. Yeah, so. all of the above. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. All right. Okay. Have a good one. See you next week. Bye.